All right, as you know, we got the gear in. We need to machine this boss um, to a height. So let me get it chucked up. Let's get it centered. And we'll start machining. Uh, All right, I think this view will give you probably the best angle. Um, unfortunately, the camera is really in the way. But let's see how I can get this done and see what we can do. So we are... Okay, let's zero that back out. So that's not too bad. Now let's tighten the chuck up and hopefully it won't move on us. That's pretty good for this application. All right, I guess I got to reposition the camera and uh, get set up to start cutting. Okay, we're all set up to cut. I took a little test patch to make sure I was on center. Uh, nothing left to do but get her machine. Here we go. I think we're at the dimension we need um, you can check it with your tools your measuring instruments but a good rule of thumb is um, go back with a scale or something because those numbers are right there you don't have to look at the dial and interpret how many rotations you got it's kind of right in front of you and my distance here was 190 thousandths um, I know the dimension I captured on paper was a little bit different but when you add in the piece the, the washer I made for this other side and the fact I wanted to make it a little bit bigger uh, so it was closer to the edge of the shoulder so there'd be less uh, end play uh, I added a little bit to it so so we're about right there I'm going to take a cleanup cut and then I will set up for cutting the diameter of the boss so let me get you back on.
the hub turned down to size it's the proper height from the face of the gear now we're going to go ahead and drill and then ream for the bore so let's see how that goes All right, now we gotta ream the hole. Got to drill through it, put a little bit of oil on there. And see how this goes. Another operation down. Okay, so um, we've machined the gear. Um, we machined down the hub so it roughly matches that hub. And then for the other side, I machined a small washer that will fit there and take up that space. Before I put it back on the lathe though, I did leave a little extra stock on the face of this hub so that way there would be less end play. Sliding parallels um, are pretty invaluable sometimes. So this is the way I'm going to use sliding parallels. Do it, put it all back together just like when I had the gear on there. And then same thing, tighten it down, and this is a sliding parallel. <clears throat> I don't know, um, for some that may not know what this is, but you can see that there is a dovetail cut there. And it's on an angle, so it slides, hence sliding parallel. And there's a screw there to tighten them up, which normally, if you leave it just snug, you don't really need to tighten them up all that tight. And when you do tighten them, because this is so small, you can distort this area of the parallel. So you're better off just leaving it snug and moving it with your fingers like I'm doing here. But back to what I'm talking about. You take the sliding parallel, and now... What I'm going to do is get a transfer measurement. And the transfer measurement will be from the washer to the face of that nut. So now it's very tight in there, right? So take your micrometer, and now we can measure what this is. And that will give us that exact dimension. And we can see in this case, we are at 800 and, say, 3.5. I'm sure we can go on the 10th scale and we'll figure out exactly what it is, but that's not really 100% important at this moment. And then, um, really what you want to do is you could probably go around in a couple different spots to look for the biggest and the smallest, which we're going to go for the smallest dimension. 
So we had 803 over there. And over here you see we have 804 and a half. So could that be the washer that I have in there? Yes. Could it be this this face and, and the age of this thing being so old? Yes, it could be that as well. But this is probably the best way to get a dimension like this. You can use this in keyways. Um, when things are fit, you can put this in there, pull it out, and then take a transfer measurement. That's called a transfer measurement. But <clears throat> So now that we have that information, let's go to the information of how much did I make the gear. So I was shooting for 805 and um, just a hair over 805. And since the shoulder dimension, we got 803 and a half and 804 and a half, obviously we have a thousandths, one thousandths interference fit. And that would lock, obviously lock this gear right up. So I'm going to have to go back to the lathe and just take a little bit off of here. I'll do that off camera because you've seen the whole machining of the gear and everything in the part three video. Oh, so yeah, there's a, a quick lesson on using sliding parallels to get a transfer measurement. All right. Looks like we're gonna, we're gonna remount this gear. Let's see how we do. A little bit of oil in there. Make sure that is good to go. More oil. Okay, and then. Get it. Get this started. 